Hi there, welcome back to Hobo Shoestring Missing Person Case, also known as Mark. I'll probably refer to that name throughout this video as it's easier reference. Looking at the latest updates and developments within the case and the conversations within the community, that's what I want to do today. And on top, look at it from a more visual perspective from Google Earth satellite imagery to get a true perspective of the area, what it looks like, potential spots of interest, including one key location, which is supposedly going to be investigated this Saturday. So we've got a range of interesting information and details to get through today, and as well visually. Make sure to stick around from start to finish, that would be appreciated, so you understand it completely. Welcome to those that may be here watching right now in this live premiere. Feel free to share your thoughts, opinions, reactions in the live chat box, right hand side of the screen. And welcome to new people to this channel. If you don't know what I do often, I cover missing person cases, mysteries, true crime cases, and even crossovers It can overlap. I do a range of many of the videos, hybrid, but if you want to check out yourself in your own time, feel free to do so. If you do want to simply catch up on the last video that I did, the very first one on Hobo Shoestring, top right corner of the screen where you see the I symbol, click on that, you'll be able to find it there. Anyone, feel free to leave your comments, your thoughts, your ideas regarding this missing person case of Mark down below. Also down below, pinned comment by me with some additional links if you want to check them out, it's available to do so. Shout out to Cleo last night for her support on this channel. It was good of her, appreciated. So with that all being said and done, let's get straight on into this video. And where we need to begin first of all is the comment section on my channel. Because new people have come on in and people from the community of Hobo Shoestring Mark, it's helped provide a wider, perspective on things, right? When people from that community come on over here, it does help a lot because they will know more than what I do, considering I've just arrived, if you want to call it that, within the case. The aim of these videos is to learn and understand what's going on, what's previously happened, what's currently happening, what could happen next, to reuse some of my abilities and what I've done with other cases and apply it here because it is possible. And also here and there, maybe keep the case alive, right? It's, it's quite new, it is ongoing, but depending how long it goes on for, you need someone to try and keep it alive. So I'll try and do that. And from the response from my first video, there are positive signs, must be in the right direction, must be doing the right thing and as for the community, mainly positive, that's good to see. But of course, I guess you'll always get those dark areas in the background, and maybe some of which will pop up today in discussion, so be on the lookout for that. So let's begin looking at the YouTube comments. I can answer questions, I can add my thoughts on, and just, you know, give a shout out to people and what they've had to say recently. There was a few more posts on the Reddit page, but we don't need to look at that because some of those points are mentioned in the comment section of my video and some key locations mentioned. So that's all good there. And then once that's done, you can head on over to the satellite imagery. Okay, let's check the comments now. I'll just adjust it to the latest and we begin from the bottom. A range of comments to get through, but it will help with the understanding. Christy there, interested in the case, heard about it today, so from yesterday. Don't know too much about it, okay? I mean, there's a few people, the odd viewer on my channel that has watched Hobo for some time. So that's interesting when you get those crossovers in the background. We've got Robert here, but that's talking about the Dylan Rounds case, right? Chase Venstra. Hmm. Now we've got this person called Chris saying, face it, he is gone for good. Very sad, but time to face facts. Hmm. No gear, no phone, no wallet, no medication, no hat, doors locked, back door open. Back door open, is that so? He either had an accident due to hallucinations, drugs, etc. Or he hurt himself on purpose. He did not go away to hide or go for a train ride. So yeah, you can say there's room for concern. 
if key items have been left behind, which he would normally take with him on journeys and when exploring, something seems off on this occasion. It stands out more, right? You pair that with his state of mind at the time, disorientated, maybe not quite thinking clear, thinking straight. Okay, so you can add things up. You can equal an outcome, such as a bad one, but is it a bit of a defeatist attitude? Maybe. Because just because someone's gone missing, and even if it is the worst case scenario, you don't just have to dust your hands off and say, well, face it, that's it. We've come to an end. Time to walk on with life and move forwards like it never happened. That just seems a bit weak-minded, right? Because in other cases, such as the Dylan Rounds case, okay, presumed Dylan Rounds was murdered, right? But the parents are determined to bring Dylan home, even if it's, you know, to bring him to rest, like um, a, a funeral, a burial, for the closure, but also for the case and in the name of Dylan, right? So even when worst case scenario comes about, the determination and passion behind those close to that that victim or that missing person, friends, family, close ones, etc. The passion, the determination doesn't go away. They continue on. Maybe it's different for outsiders who are just looking on in, who may not be impacted by this. I mean, one thing to acknowledge, and it is a common theme within different cases out there, true crime or just simply missing person mysteries, is that those closest to the missing individual, the one that may or may not have been harmed in whatever's going on. The friends and family members, for example, will have obviously a closer emotional connection to that missing person or missing group of people. And because of that emotional connection running deeper through, there's higher chances of having more hope in a better outcome. Though those on the outside, whether it be audience members or just simply strangers that have never heard of Mark before, Hobo Shoestring, they may have maybe more of a neutral or a bit of an edge on a slightly negative outcome because they are supposedly more realistic with the situation. But you also take in mind it's easier to be realistic when you're not involved in a case or when you're not impacted by it, right? So it's always, always worth taking that into mind. Um, at least from what I've seen so far within this case, there seems to be quite a consensus and agreement, especially from the community and those that know Mark, that how the events have played out, it is unusual and it is a sign for concern. Okay. Now the bit here, the comment, what Chris says, the back door open. Are you talking about the sliding door on the balcony or the upper floor? Because at least from the last article or information I read out in my first video on this case, they were mentioning how all doors were locked except the sliding door up top on the second story. So what's that all about that? And if we're just talking about a back door being open, what, on lower ground? Well, if a back door was open lower ground, then why did Mark supposedly climb down a balcony then? Was someone coming into the house going after him, chasing him? See, what I am aware of, there's been bits of information here and there which isn't correct. I'm aware. I'm just highlighting scenarios and that's all, right? Now... As for having an accident or getting injured or harmed, I mean, there's been those stories in the past, 2017, the train incident with Hobo, his hand or arm being injured but healing from it. I mean, at least when I covered the Kenny Veach case in the past, it was said that Kenny Veach, 2013 or beforehand, ended up blowing his left leg out on a 20-mile hike up a mountain and needed airlifted out. Another time bitten by a snake out there, dangerous situations, vulnerable places, right? It's so desolate, open, not much help nearby. Still was rescued at the time. But my point is, even when Kenny Veach was in the right frame of mind, he still injured himself or got injured. Accidents were made. So then when someone isn't in the right frame of mind, how much more worse could it be? Just a little question there. As for Hobo Shoestring, he's had injuries in the past. Um, 
would he be considered as vulnerable back then when he had those injuries or not? That's just a question to the audience, okay? I saw a short video from the past nine years ago just today and he appeared to be drunk, but people in the comments were saying how Hobo cleaned himself up over time and became better and more healthy compared to how he was in the past. So depending the situation or the state of mind or physically the state of an individual, you take that into consideration if they're in a dangerous environment or partaking in a dangerous activity. Just examples like that. This, there seems to be another consensus to an extent within the community that someone like Hobo Shoestring probably didn't go that far, whether it be that by choice or because of his own physical ability and state at the time. That's why when searches are taking place coming up, it's within the area, roughly speaking. We'll take that into consideration later. Comment-wise, Craig says, I think you may be correct. Native guy saying, I keep seeing this exact comment posted on multiple channels. You must be some kind of bot. Copying and pasting comments. Hmm. Interesting. I mean, not that this is the case. Maybe this person's being realistic or something. But, you know, you don't have to just suddenly give up like that. Okay. Other people may want to keep on trying to find Hobo in hopes that he is alive or at least get some kind of closure. There's no harm in that, at least. Um, but if compared to the past with comments, right, with the Kenny Veach case, dozens of times there was people leaving comments on my video saying, oh, Kenny Veach, he's long gone, okay? Oh, he committed suicide, the end. Oh, he's lost in the desert, the end. But how do you know? Do you have proof? No. Is it still a mystery? Yes. Are there unanswered questions? Yes. It's like people will try and wrap something up and say, oh, it's done and dusted, move on. Why does that person want you to move on? Is it because they're responsible in the background? You've got to look out for this resistance. It could be a, a form of covert resistance. They don't attack you. They don't threaten you. They don't hurt or insult you. But they kind of show a form of urgency. Can you please move on? from this area? Can you cover a different case? And it's like, why do you care so much? Are you invested in this case yourself? Are you responsible for the case itself? Right? Just be on the lookout for that when it comes to language and wording. I've seen it a lot already, right? Now, what's this one? Bill, they need to drag, dredge, dredge or drag the lake. He's probably in there. Now, Quick question, Would ad, is it Adventures with Purpose, that diving team, would they be useful in a case like this? Let me know your thoughts down below. And we've got Mind. He's probably in the lake behind where he lives. YouTubers need to band together and get some old boys out there and start dragging or dredging the lake. The police are not doing that. So why aren't the police doing that? Are the police putting in effort to begin with? Just a quick question. Let me know your thoughts. Because when it came to the Dylan Rounds case, although that's a true crime related one, the police didn't, they weren't that proactive. They didn't utilise all the resources. They were a little bit dodgy, the LE, Box Elder County Sheriff's Office. Now here, we're talking about a completely different police department because it's in a completely different area and state. That's worth taking into consideration. I don't know what the name of the police are, the county is. You call it the Tennessee Police County. <laughs> you want to fill in the blanks, feel free to do so. But nevertheless, it could be the case here once again when the general public and some people online end up banding together stronger and may even do more than what the authorities do. You know, it can happen. As long as someone or some people can do something, that's better than nothing. Skeptical here, shout out to Skeptical, says, which lake? And Christy saying, a group is meeting on Saturday. Christy says, behind his apartment. Now, why does it not mention the name of the apartment here? I wonder if it's further up one of the comments. It said something like Boone, Boone Lake. 
Hmm. Maybe it's in a, another comment thread up top. We'll see. You've got Cleo, you're welcome. This person, call me crazy, but I think he's still alive. I mean, you've got to take into consideration how long has he been missing for? And with that length of time, what are the chances of survival? You take into consideration the fact that he is a bit of an outdoors person and he spent a lot of time out there, so he would be more familiar with it compared to someone who's in an urban setting most of the time and then suddenly ventures out into the woodland for the first time ever. So we have taken in consideration as factors. Bill saying, I don't think so. One of the meds he left behind is something he needs to stay alive, they said. Who's they? This person, Jill, misinformation, marketing. Uh-oh, what does that mean? Mike saying, that's what he said, but is it 100% true or a bit of an exaggeration? Body is a miraculous thing, a cloning machine trying to live forever, regenerating all its cells every seven years. I'm sure it can get along just fine without our pills. Uh-oh. Aging is just errors in the cloning process over time due to stresses from the environment and imperfect cloning process. If we had perfect copies, we wouldn't age. So the body can heal if you let it. I'm afraid he was too doped out to let his body naturally heal and was on a never-ending reliance on prescription drugs. He inspired me to stop drinking, actually, but I was always disappointed to hear him doped out on what sounded like prescription meds. And I excused it because of his health issues, but I knew a lot of it was for fun. It wouldn't lead anywhere good. I think he had some accidents whilst nodding off on them like falling into his food what typical prescription drug stuff i lived in a shelter and seen it all there's so many kind of drugs out there and it leaves them like zombies i don't know how any of this helps any of them anyway i can't speak for his life-saving meds but the other stuff it seemed like he was enjoying them on the rails and i can't blame him i've done the same the thing about opiates is they really put you in a very depressed mood when you're coming off them, nearly suicidal or not least in that frame of mind, everything being bleak since they take over your feel-good chemicals, um, what, dopamine, your brain loses its ability to make its own and you'll feel terrible for a few days before you recover. I wonder if he was going through something like that after withdrawal or something. That coupled with the stresses of his situation, he talked to his mum that night after leaving the ER and after the phone call, they rushed straight over to his place at which point they couldn't find him. That indicates he was very distressed and whatever happened, it was his own decision, so hopefully it was one that's him still alive. But this is the thing, you say it's his own decision, but if he's in a vulnerable state, not quite in the right frame of mind, he's not truly making any real decisions, right? If he's not quite thinking, if he's not quite there with it. Now, I don't know what other people will think of this comment. I mean, when I first started reading it, I wasn't sure if it was someone from the Kenny Veach case, you know, where you get all deep with the different ideas. But anyway, James says, I've heard his story and I know the truth about the situation. He is missing. There is no more at this time. Right. I just hope he wanders back into town. Hmm. I mean, if you could look for previous patterns, has he done anything like this before? Has he ever gone radio silent before? Yes or no? And how long for? Now, I mean, you say you've heard the story, and that's about it, but, well, there's a bit more to it than that. You know, look at the stuff what we've already looked at, the different possibilities and outcomes. That's additional information. You can know about a story of, yes, once upon a time there was a person, they've gone missing the end. Yes, but what happened past that point? That's why we're here. Bill, they need to drag the lake behind his house, all his stuff in his house, phone, meds, etc. Which lake? Finally, there we go. Middle Tennessee Living says Boone Lake. So I appreciate that. Shout out Tennessee Living for giving name of the location. That is helpful. We'll definitely check that on the satellite imagery shortly in today's video. Be on the lookout for that. Beaster says they will be searching that area on Saturday. So, I mean, tick it off the list or, unfortunately, may find something. 
is one of those situations. I don't know if it's mentioned in the comment above. Could do. Josh, that said, I've been watching his channel for over a year. He also has serious health issues. Craig, I've been watching for a while. I feel like I know the guy. I hope he just wanders back into town. Yeah, not quite the same extent, but in the very early days, the beginning of the Dylan Rounds case, the parents were just hoping that Dylan would walk back to his farm and return like nothing ever happened. Uh, I remember in the East Idaho news interview with Nate Eaton, um, when Candice Cooley, Justin Rounds, when they were coming round to Dylan's first birthday since going missing, his 21st birthday, I think. Or tw no, it would have been his 20th birthday, actually. Yeah, the 20th birthday. Because he was 19 at the time of going missing. So during the 20th birthday, and the family was saying, oh, it'd be great if he just came on back now. So that hope... Whether people say it's delusional or not, it can be a form of um, a coping mechanism within the, the brain. You know, suppressing, withholding the subconscious thoughts, which could be more realistic. Holding on, hoping for a good outcome. I get that. This person, Sully, no, I haven't heard about this missing person case. Fair enough. Nightly, this guy was a genuine soul and it would be a tragic loss if the worst turns out to be true. Pray for him if you can. I've been watching him for a year and a half. He is awesome. Great videos. So Lone Wolf, uh, I remember Lone Wolf back in the Kenny Beach day. So it's interesting to see how people on my channel have been watching elsewhere. And, and it's come to this point now, this cross section of missing people, YouTubers or not. We've got Cat Loves saying, Cancer, I would contact hospital to keep an eye out for him since he don't have a wallet. How strange. Skeptical. Very interesting, ref. Thanks for bringing it to our attention. Very sad, though. This guy is living his best life just like Dylan Rounds and met unforeseen circumstances just like Dylan Rounds. Is it like Kenny Veach? I guess you could say so. You seem to have an intuition about kinds of humans right i think the difference with dylan rounds and hobo shoestring is besides one being a youtuber the other one not the main difference is at least speaking of right now one is foul play murder situation the other one with mark is just unknown missing person now, would there be another difference between Dylan Rounds and, and uh, Mark? Well, I guess one person taken out and going missing at the time of doing what they do best at, farming and getting on with jobs like that and meeting an unfortunate outcome, unforeseen, I guess, in the eyes of Dylan at the time. As for Mark, it could be a little bit more complex, right? Because I don't think personally he's gone missing going out of his way to do more train hopping i think he's also gone missing because of a christine passe parker type like situation of being confused and not quite being aware of one's surrounding at that time due to some kind of side effects experienced not that the health issues cross over in similarity but just the the theme of making bad decisions but it's just because they're not quite there with it at that moment. So that if they do come round, if that's the case, not literally, but in their mind, they may wonder, where are they at? All I would say is, someone like Hobo Shoestring may have more experience with the outdoors, if that serves as, as an advantage for him over others, maybe. It's worth taking this all into consideration, right? I mean, with the Kenny Veach case in the early days with, uh, was it K3 News and the daughter Vicky Veach said, well, he's got experience out there, so his chances of survival are probably much higher. So a level of hope, but also some kind of valid points mentioned too. But is there any foul play within um, the case with Mark Hobo Shoestrink? Not seeing any foul play yet. You never know what might show up next. Skeptical does say the only door unlocked was the back balcony door. Right, so the comment further down here that said about the back door, 
they were referring to the balcony. So the balcony being on the back. Okay. So if that's the reality, escape, well, escaping or leaving the property from the balcony climbing down from the back, you look at what's on the back. If you just go in a straight line, what's ahead facing that way, away from the house? Water, I think someone mentioned. Would that be Boone Lake? Well, we'll take a look. It might put it into better perspective. Skeptical says, my sister's boyfriend jumped off our balcony to escape a beating from my brother. Perhaps Mark came home and had to escape from something or someone in the house. Pure speculation on my part. We'll be looking for updates. I mean, with all the doors being locked downstairs and all around the building, I don't think anyone would have broken in. Someone would have had to have been in the building along with Mark with all the doors being locked. So did Mark lock himself in with somebody else in the house, an intruder? What's going on there? My idea, just my idea, could be if he's hallucinated and he's a bit confused, disorientated, could he see things which aren't quite there, which could panic him and make him make random decisions on the spot. So if he feels like he's trapped or he needs to hide, lock all the doors, whether he locks them all or they're already locked, then started panicking, feeling or seeing or sensing something was wrong or he was in danger, maybe because he wasn't on the outside and because he knows and has experience and he enjoys the outdoors, was he in that moment thinking, I must get out, I must escape, I need to breathe. And for some reason, he he gets through the sliding door upstairs on the back and then climbs down the balcony. It seems a, a bit of rational thinking, unnatural behaviour, but it will be normal and natural for them, at least, when they're not quite in the right frame of mind. They may see it as must get out, must escape. I'm not saying that that's directly what he was thinking or saying at the time, but when you could just simply walk through the, the normal door entrance where the building, and that's not the option here, there must be a reason for it. Moving on. Goggles, why did the hospital discharge him in the condition he was in? Mike, he left against their wishes. They're not a nursing home. Come on, he had no health insurance. What world do you live on? Well, I guess countries vary, don't they? Ran out of insurance coverage, question mark. Well, he's had injuries in the past. He's healed, he's recovered from. Did he have health insurance back then? Yes or no? I mean, if it was his own wishes, I want to go, I want to leave the hospital, and he was able to, I don't think he was restrained, no. But due to the conditions or his body language at the time, how he expressed himself, it was some room for concern. It got the attention of the police in the area. So it must be somewhat serious. Now, Wild saying he's a local here in my hometown of East Tennessee. We've been searching every day. Thank you for spreading the message. The more eyes out looking, the better the odds. Still hoping for the best. You're welcome. And um, that's a fair point. Shout out to Wild. And uh, we'll we'll try and put it into a visual perspective today. That's what I was saying. Like when it comes to his house, his building of living, whatever you want to call it. And I was like referring to where's the location of it. Someone said um, basically the name of the town, name of the area roughly, but not the actual coordinates or the location of the building. I understand that something like that may be more sensitive and it can't be revealed. Um it would help, though, to get a visual idea of the starting point. But, you know, maybe we use Boone Lake today as the starting point, considering that's what will be happening as we're in investigation and search, public one, as of Saturday, and go from there. Charles, maybe he went something like you effing with him. Maybe he want people like you effing with him. Right, so this is the first bit of resistance, I guess. Don't know who this Charles is. Never seen him before. Default profile, that pretty much checks out. I've got my experience there with those type of people. 
So what? He wants the attention. Is that what you're getting at? Mm. Jim, prayers, Glenn, shout out Glenn. Bradley, Shoestring is a good person and a veteran. I'm praying for him. Christy, I've followed Hobo channel for years. I have my thoughts on what happened. Feel free to share them if you want in the comment section. Lone Wolf watches videos and get to know him. Well, this is the thing. Sometimes it can take me 0.5 seconds to pick up on humans. I have analysed human behaviour for over 10 plus years since the age of whatever. Done deep, in-depth analysis of humans since 14. People will tell me, move on, do this, do that, or do this, do that. And at the end of the day, all under control. We've got Missy Marie, not seen her for a while. Congratulations on all of your subs. That's sad about this man missing. My heart goes out to the poor father of the autistic teen, Sebastian, who went missing under suspicious circumstances. I don't know what that case is. Great job bringing this guy to attention for his case. It's the only way to focus on them. Hope all is well with you. You look really healthy and happy. Interesting. Shout out to Missy Marie. Um, interesting to say how I'm healthy. Um, I guess being 224 pounds turned out well. Because <laughs> um, how much muscle did I put on? 17 pounds, I guess. Anyway, Scott Hall. I was thinking of the wrestler then. Scott Hall says, I am a hobo also and no mark. Okay. Then this person, Yannette, they organised a search Saturday at the boat ramp at the lake behind his apartment, 4212 Bristol Highway, Johnson City. Hmm, okay, so appreciate that. Behind his apartment. Right, I'll, I'll search that, see what comes up. Billy gets a cadaver dog. Uh, what, me? <laughs> or oh, are you referring to that? Billy. Did he take his credit card? He will run out of money. Also at night, look for campfires. That's just it. He took nothing with him. Yeah. Most part of it, he didn't take anything with him. There's a little bit of confusion with the IED. Some saying it was missing, other people saying it wasn't. Cheryl, shoestring has cancer. Value saying he had, but no longer. Does anyone know what that medication is that shoestring was taking? Hobo. What what medication was it for? What did it treat? What are the possible side effects if you didn't take that medication? Does anyone know? Victor. There is not much to learn about. Sadly, in the USA, there is no hope. If you are not well off without health insurance, you ride it out the longest you can. But man, there are always diminishing returns. Even if you have health insurance, when you look at quality over quantity and your freedom is at risk, what the F, man? As a song says, you don't have to go home, but you can't stay here. It's closing time. I mean... Just being realistic, if in certain situations and circumstances of a, an area or situation is that bad, should humans reproduce if it's that bad? Why go on with the cycle? Or, if possible, move elsewhere. But there's always obstacles along the way. Was there anything else I needed to acknowledge? Um, no, not do I need to get a screen? Let me just get a screenshot of that, just in case. Because sometimes it's easier to copy and paste the text. It's a bit more accurate. Oh no, what do we have here? Kylie, or how do you say the name? Killy, saying Kent Kruger admitted to kidnapping and burying shoestring in a video. Value. He poured water through a hole in the ground to keep him hydrated. Right, I'm sure that's like joking about. We'll get into that a bit later. We'll probably need to address that first before we go in any further. Screaming Egg, interesting name. Can someone say why Hobo Shoestring YouTube channel hasn't been demonetized when it's full of illegal activity? Wait, oh, demonized? Or do you mean demonetized? Which one are you referring to? 
do you mean his channel should be shut down or his adverts and monetization should be taken away from him because he supposedly partakes in illegal activity from at least how it's gone about in the community he uh, if, it, if it's labeled as doing something illegal yeah it's been worded in the community that those and people like train people that work on the trains watch his videos and approve of him so maybe it's not that bad i mean if he's done it for this long how often has he got in trouble for doing it i mean what he does whether it's illegal or not does it put anyone else in harm's way or is it only him himself that's risking his life if it was a situation where it was only him risking his life and not putting anyone else in the way negatively then it's not that bad if that makes sense I do understand when you get other activities out there where people may do something dangerous and it can harm people in public, put them at risk. It's not fair on them. Like um, sometimes you see some videos on YouTube of people drifting and doing reckless driving on public roads and it could go wrong and it could end up killing just random general public people, family in a car crash, right? Recklessness like that. If it doesn't involve that, then I guess it's not as much of a problem. But, you know, at least from what's been talked about in general, the hobo shoestring, there's been quite a bit of positivity around him, his channel and what he does. Not seeing too much negativity. White Company, being an outdoorsman, gypsy wanderer, I followed Mark for years now. He's such a kind soul with great stories of what I think of as a real American or America, like the Old West, riding Cadillac grayness, dodging the bull, rolling out and hitting the road despite his disabilities, he just gets on with life. Some haters post he's on meth somewhere. I just reply with, you know what, I hope you're right. At least he would still be with us. If anything has happened to him, I'll never be able to listen to the littlest hobo without crying. Prayers for Mark. Okay. Response-wise, adding God, he won't be train hopping without his bucket. He can't get up and down without it. He has a tall bucket with a handle. He attaches a dog lead to it, uses it as a step and hauls it up. He won't travel without his hat, bedroll and tarp and five litres of water. He's a rugged outdoorsman and will hide in the bushes either side of the tracks using a different path each time as to not wear a trail for people to find. There's no actual evidence of him climbing off the balcony other than that it was the only unlocked door. But I don't know if the doors were locked from the inside sliding bar lock or chain. So I think climbing off a balcony is speculation. But to be honest, whether he was on the inside or out locking the door... To be able to lock that door would mean you have to be inside of the building or on the balcony. If you lock yourself out on purpose and then you're on the balcony, inevitably you would have to climb on down to lower ground, right? If you was to unlock the balcony door, walk on into the building, then lock it, well, the report was all the other doors were locked, right? So you could say, well, then maybe he just ended up walking through one of the lower, the, the, the base floor, the, the entrance, the main doorway, unlocked it, went out, locked it, and then went on elsewhere. But the original story was, the reality, the sliding door up top was unlocked. So if it was unlocked, well, it wasn't locked after, was it? So someone would have left probably him out that way because if he went in from that way how did he get to the balcony to begin with right hopefully that makes sense didn't want to complicate the situation but it wouldn't surprise me right i don't know how tall the building is to be climbing off from the balcony if there's a soft landing or not i mean if something did go wrong jumping from it falling down you'd probably be very close by, but that doesn't seem to be the case. I mean, the bit about using a bucket, which I think I've seen in a previous video here and there, which he's used, okay, to get up to a train, right? Because of the height difference. And you compare that to a balcony, 
Seems like a greater difference, doesn't it? But he supposedly managed. Because how else would he leave that building? Unless, for some reason, he was in, in the building, got back, went up to the balcony, unlocked the door, was looking at the view or something, then decided, hmm, I think I'll go off on an adventure or I'll just leave, whatever's going through his mind, forgets to lock the sliding door, leaves it open, and exit through his main door downstairs, locking it. My question would be, have they found his keys? His keys to his living accommodation. Were they left behind or were they taken? Does anyone know? Moving on to the next comment, we've got Google is a piece of shit. <laughs> Interesting name saying there was a case in Grand Junction, Colorado, where an autistic serial killer stabbed a hobo to death and dismembered his body. Sadly, there are some disgusting people out there who harmed the homeless. I guess it is one of those things the risk one runs when being out there in the open, especially in urban and populated areas. Uh, sometimes out of one's control of how life situations go and what life may throw at you. And then having to survive on the streets can be rough, dangerous and all that, of course. But I think one thing that is fair to say, because might as well acknowledge it, it can go both ways. People can take it out in unnecessary ways on homeless people. You know, random attacks on homeless people. Bad things happening to homeless people. Yeah. But then there's been other moments and occasions where homeless people have been a bit violent or aggressive towards normal people at times. Whether that being territorial, defensive of where that homeless person's living, they may see a general public individual as a threat, but they're just simply walking by, right? It goes both ways. Both can do bad. Both can be dangerous at times, depending on the situation. Does that apply to hobo shoestring? Not from the looks of it. As said, most people have a positive outlook on him. Is that it for the comments? Yeah. So I think what's important we do now is probably refer back to Kent Kruger about admitting to kidnapping and burying shoestring. Let's try and work about that now just so others are aware of that situation. So I did have a look on the person's channel, Kent Kruger being his YouTube username. What is he? What's he all about? Well, it appears to be another homeless individual of an older age documenting his experience, what it's like on a day-to-day -day or so basis and simply trying to survive out there on the streets. A part of the train hopping community? Don't think so. A part of some kind of uh, online homeless community or trying to spread awareness to his situations in life, I guess. I didn't want to show the channel just because it might cause unnecessary resistance and backlash, you never know. But if you want to do your own research or check the channel out, feel free to do so. I think when looking at it on the spot, you know, the person's working with what they've got. Obviously, it's not going to be high-end just because of the situations they're in. Of course, that's understandable. But maybe when you look at some of the titles, could be considered a bit negative. But then when you look at the most popular videos on his channel that to do and the date back from like four months ago, maybe a bit more, and the like response videos in the name of Hobo Shoestring. Oh, Shoestring, yeah, Mark. From the looks of it, Kent Kruger has some kind of conflict with Mark Hobo. Okay, Hobo Shoestring, known as Mark, right? And it dates back some months ago. Yeah, I guess it's been ongoing. And I guess ever since Mark going missing, there have been a few more responses from Kent. I think there was, a, I did see a, a response where someone talked about Hobo going missing and then Kent said, good, I hope he is dead. So not exactly a positive outlook there. You can see, we call it a grudge or just some kind of disagreements ongoing. Um, I think Kent provided a video explaining the, the conflicts from way back then and what happened. There was, co there was one comment by Kent claiming that Hobo had it in for him and 
ordered some boys or guys to order a hit or an attack on him. Seems a bit far-fetched, who knows what goes on in the background. But, you know, one key thing to acknowledge, if the individual can did say he's responsible for taking out Hobo, it's not exactly the smartest thing to do if it was mentioned in a video, whether that's still up or not. But the, the main thing to acknowledge, right? And I'm just basing this off from other behaviour in the past when it's come to other cases. There will be times and places where an individual can come across as suspicious. They dig themselves into a hole. They do themselves no favours in how they act, what they say, their attitude and outlook on a missing individual. When it came to the Dylan Rounds case, missing person then treated as foul play, then treated as a murder investigation. In the very early days, when it came to the lie detector test, which went with James Brenner, the main one, uh, Chase Venstra, Don Hatley, when it came to Kurt Wadsworth, close friend to Dylan, and saw him a day before Dylan went missing, Kurt refused to do a lie detector test. By simply refusing to do it, it's as if the person had something to hide and they were worried that if they failed on the test, they would let slip something or it would eventually come out, right? In the end, supposedly Kurt Wadsworth innocent or mostly innocent, but how he came across in the early days and with the information switching and changing from his side of the story and adding extra bits on each time, what good did that do? Now, it made him look suspicious, so people questioned him. And whether he himself or other family members felt they were being attacked, you do yourself no favours, okay? The more suspicious and shifty you appear, the more questioning that will follow from other people out there, right? It is what it is. So in this situation with Ken Kruger, who has if you want to call it a hatred towards hobo shoestring, whether it be for a valid or invalid reason, it's lasted for quite some time and it's popped up again because of hobo being in the, not quite in the limelight for the right reasons, but for unfortunate circumstances of going missing. And with what Kent has said, it comes across as negative. And I don't know, it's just like, when you see behaviour like that, that's probably the first person you look to and question. I think there was a comment by some person saying, just so happens that when Hobo has gone missing, you show up or Kent starts talking again or says something bad, it makes you look suspicious. Does that make sense to anyone? I mean, my question would be, how far away is Kent Kruger from where Hobo lived? Are they in the same state, the same town, or far apart? That's what you should take into consideration, because if they're nearby to one another, right, things could happen. But don't want to say too much there, because you know how things can escalate. All I'll say is, when you start acting suspicious, dark, maybe negative, are you responsible behind the disappearance of Hobo? Just like how I've questioned people in the past who have shown resistance towards me for simply covering a missing person or mystery case. Why are people acting like that? There must be a reason, motive behind it. Maybe in this case with Kent, it's just a long-standing feud or form of conflict with Hobo in the past, and it still continues to this day, maybe. I think some people in the background were simply saying that Kent does what he does because they're his successful videos. I mean, to put it into perspective, in a way, small scale, would be when it came to another YouTuber known as Technoblade, Minecraft gamer on YouTube, did pass away, I think some months ago now, or maybe last year, I'm correct in saying, it could be, even be in 2022, I can't remember. But whenever Technoblade passed away because of having cancer, obviously there was an outpour of whether you call it support or emotion from people in the community, viewers and creators. They paid their respect, etc. But there were some channels out there that milked the death and the cancer by making videos over and over again in the name and using his name and the thumbnail of Technoblade 
two to four months later after his death, but constantly going on and on. Why? Well, it's because those videos were successful and worked. Well, why fix something that isn't broken? Well, in that case, probably wasn't the right thing to do. But as for the people behind those channels doing that, it was working for them and they were benefiting, even though it probably wasn't exactly right. And it did cause backlash and people did point the BS out. So could that be a reason why this this Kruger individual is referring back to Hobo now because of what's happened to Hobo? Is it that whenever Mark is in the spotlight or getting attention, others are jealous of that, so they show negativity towards him? Could be. Where it be? I mean, I mean, to be honest, you can't really go on about forms of jealousy because, it, well, one is homeless, the other, Mark, is homeless or somewhat homeless by choice, if I'm correct in saying. Does one have it harder than the other in life? So maybe outlooks and perspectives are slightly different. I'm just trying to understand, right, the conflict behind it all. Obviously, the, the main focus and importance is that this individual, Mark, is missing. I'm trying to understand, get to the bottom of that. But along the way, if there are clues or leads which could point in a direction, it's worth looking at. Now, does anyone think that this missing person case is down to foul play? Or just more so, maybe an accident? Or that Mark is in full control of what he's doing and his surrounding and awareness? Let me know your thoughts down below. Now, with that brief talk out the way, let's at least go on to satellite imagery now to see it from bird's eye view to get an understanding of the area and try and pinpoint the place which is going to be searched this Saturday. And let's just see if we can see anything of interest. It depends, I guess, when the satellite imagery dates back, whether it's modern, up-to-date, or in the past. I know when we looked at Lucent, Utah in recent time, that was updated, but is Tennessee updated or not? Let's find out right now. Here we are. Just need to get to the area. Copy and paste the, I guess, address that was mentioned first of all by that commenter. See where it takes us. Parking lot. So I guess this is the meeting spot for those people searching the lake. I mean, looking at it close up in the area, you've got a bit like a woodland area there. Unless that's someone's house. You can see some vehicles there. Bit of a neighbourhood, as you can see here, with those houses nearby. They look reasonable sized as well. One appears to have a pool that leads down to what looks like a river from the looks of it. And there's even a bridge there of um, main roads. Interesting. The 3D rendering, reasonable. Yeah. So this must be the meeting spot since it's a car park. Can we at least get onto ground level just to see what it looks like? Get an idea. Okay. Main road there. Let me know if you see anything of interest, anything that stands out to you. Just wanted to show you this so you get an idea. This is supposedly the meeting spot from the looks of it. Can we actually go into the parking lot? Okay, so it looks like you can park up and then work your way down there. Dog walker. Hmm. Water levels look kind of low at that point, but... Depends the season and when it was taken. There is a wooded area there, but there are there is a house a building. Would it have surveillance on? Maybe. Trail cameras in the area, have they been checked? Is it possible? No parking beyond this point. I will type in Boone Lake shortly just for the actual description because I didn't see the name pop up when I was searching this area. We do have a pixelated, censored spot over that way, which I don't quite understand. Started picking up on it when looking at the Idaho 4 case, Moscow. Oh, I can't go any further. But obviously it's not blurred, so it must be a glitch or an error. There is something over there, some kind of structure near to the water. Not quite sure what that is. Mm. Oh, some parking down there, disabled spot. I don't know. 
Uh, why would you have uh, the disabled parking spot right down there, right near to the waterway? I don't know. If something went wrong, would you end up falling in? And you got a sign out that says no parking beyond this point, yet there is parking down there. A bit silly. Huh. There you go, some potholes as well. Now, with that being in mind, get rid of that marker. Turn this off. See if I can find it. No guarantee, but we'll see. Johnson City, and then type in, is it Boone Creek? Boone Lake? Boone Lake House Complex? Housing Complex, would that be to do with the missing person? They said that it backs onto a lake. Well, we see a lake there, don't we? As it works its way around. I don't know the distance from where we were first looking at as for the parking spot. Um, that looks a bit different. Best not stray too far away. I said, I'm kind of looking at this a bit blindly. Boone Lake House. Housing Complex. Does this have anything to do... No, it can't be because it's too low to the ground. I don't see any balcony. So it can't be here. Let me just at least go on ground level to get an idea. No, these are like bungalows, so that wouldn't be the case. Very old imagery as well. But there is the lake there. What other descriptions came up? Boone Lake House... It's annoying when you get the full text that right, shows up on the screen. Get rid of all that. Try it one more time. Boone Creek. Yeah, that's definitely useful. Not. Hmm. Disappointed. I thought the names would have shown up a lot clearer, right? Hmm. I said, work in progress, maybe with time, be able to find the named locations or maybe rough coordinates. I think those, the first description, what we came across, don't know if I can get it back up now. Parking area, key area, near to the lake, of course, but as for the Houses and buildings nearby that seem to be quite big, such as that one. Is that a mansion? You can't even get to that, can you? Maybe you can. I mean, this is unrelated, but I just wanted to have a look out of interest. Wow. Gated as well. Looks like Christmas, that, with the decorations on. What is that there over there? Is, is, is that like one big house or is it more than it? Is it a hotel? What does that say? Ridgeland Gardens. Oh, is it like a hall? I'm not too sure, but it's a very big building. House, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Down here as well. Look at that gate. That's massive. That's Tennessee. Range Rover. Yeah, it doesn't look that rough, does it? Wow, some big um, buildings. Hmm. But the way people were saying it was how there were some houses which back on to, like, uh, the lake or boating area. And to be honest, down here, you got, like, a bit of a pier that comes down. And then you got these buildings, houses here, which do have two storeys and a balcony. So could this be the area here? Let me try and drop the coordinates. Will it let me do that? No, I've got to get rid of street view first. Hold on a minute. Could it be here? The area of um, Hobo Shoestring where he was living at roughly. And one of these buildings, one of the balconies, sliding door unlocked and possibly climbed down and then went from where? Because this seems to be the back of the houses, doesn't it? And the back of them are going on to the river, or the, the lake, whatever you want to call it. Well, it's more of a river, to be honest. 
Because when looking over this way, those houses are quite big and wealthy. And even those there um, are quite reasonable. But further down this way, yeah, in terms of size and how they do look, there is a difference. Now, what do we have lower here on ground? Do we have any boats? Is that a boat? That actually looks like maybe a trailer with a kayak, a red kayak for storage, maybe. Now, I don't know if it has dried up this area or not. Maybe with rainfall, it could flood. But then again, you've got some buildings down here, which are on ground level. But then again, to be fair, you've got these like little piers that stick out, don't you? You know, they're slightly higher up and they seem to be on like stilts, raised elevation. Is that because of flood prevention, but it can't be that bad though, or can it? I don't know. It's just because you've got these like little piers, and normally you get piers like this because the surrounding area is filled with water. I mean, like, look at that building there structure. Look at how high it is off the grounds. That's flood prevention. Um, but then you look at these homes down here, like an RV trailer, I mean, is that temporary or what? Won't that flood if it ever rained hard? Look at all these buildings down here. Some of them are raised off the ground, but others, like this trailer, aren't. I know it's only a smaller river here, but you know, sometimes the smaller it is, not as wide, it can fill up quicker. It's interesting terrain and environment, to be honest, here. It does look dried up now, but other times it could become saturated. So if anyone wants to provide context of the area, and let me know, did I nail the, um, nail, what do you call it, a hammer, nail the hammer on the head? No, I think I said that the wrong way around, but you get what I'm saying. Because this seems to stand out to me as the spot. Do we have any explorable locations? Has anyone uploaded any custom photos, any dots? Unfortunately, I don't think so, but if we can at least go on to the potential housing estate, these buildings here, what are those people doing? I don't know, digging tree out or so. Okay, some work being done, clearing. Well, you can see the water down there quite clearly. You see the house is that back onto it. Can't see the balconies from here because it, it'll be on the back. There you go, look. There's an example of a balcony, right? Sliding door or not. How high is the balcony from the ground? Not that bad, to be honest. Of course, if you landed a bit funny or on the side of your ankle, you could sprain it, break your leg. But if you land properly, you will be okay. You will be safe. You probably won't injure yourself that bad at all, right? See, this is why I'm trying to put it into perspective, right? We need like um, a visual representation when telling the story or the potential story. Maybe I'll refer back to this location in the future. But let me know if I am in the wrong area, okay? I'm just basing it off from how it looks visually. And it kind of does match the description, right? Because of the water down there, backs on to it. Got the piers lower down. Back of the house leads to it, such as those on that side or even those there. The rest of the houses in the distance over that way are quite developed and are singular build houses for a family or whoever. But this kind of like, what do you call it, flats or just smaller, smaller homes, housing complex. Maybe more affordable, if I'm right in saying. But then again, you know, they've got some... Decent cars parked up here, even um, you got a Honda there, BMW there, so um, obviously it can't be that cheap. But th I guess this was taken around Christmas time because you got the reefs up, so it is outdated, This the street view at least. But as for those uh, balconies higher up, I mean, low ground, it's just a garage, but up top you got the balconies there made out of wood. No sliding doors from here at least, normal doors. I don't know if that differs from... The ones back here, but unfortunately I can't go down any further, which is a shame. Any sliding doors? Not from the looks of it. Hmm. 
So where that balcony is, would that be classified as... Well, I know that's ground floor, but that's just like a garage storage unit. So is the living room where the balcony is, and then the bedroom is the next floor after that, so the third floor. First floor, not for living. Second floor for living. Third floor for living. Is is that right? I mean, for sleeping in, I mean. And there could be the living or kitchen. Of course, if it was a flat, the living conditions would greatly vary. Um, but there is only a singular door there. There's no, like, mailbox flat system. Is that a Christmas present back there? Could be. Christmas lights. That looks like it's in development of something. Not quite sure what that could be. More houses, homes. The water level is very low down there, to be honest. So maybe it's not as bad as I expected. But yeah, the height of the balcony isn't that bad as what I was imagining. I don't know if we've got any other potential spots of interest. I mean, let's go there and to the far end. Um, vast area, but if the water level is low at the time of when searching, it should prove a bit easier to look about. One thing to acknowledge, though, I think some people did mention it themselves, saying if for some reason Hobo was in the lake or in a river um, and he's not weighted down just due to the natural process of how things happen and the body becomes bloated, fills with gas, it would float to the top of the surface. So surely someone would have seen it by now. After the length of time he's been missing for, if he's in water, he should have been found by now. But to be fair, just to put in perspective, when it came to the UK with, I think, a person called Nicole Bully, a female, went missing, eventually found in water, in a river or lake, okay? And originally, early on, it was presumed that that's where she last was and that's what she ended up going into the water, right? But the police authorities were searching about, found nothing, then fast forward much later, oh, then she ends up being found in the water. Bit weird, maybe search efforts were underdone, poorly done, but in the end, they were found in the water, and I guess they were floating. They would have been visible, at least, but that was after some time. So even when you may think that a person could be somewhere, they're in, like, in plain sight, don't mean to say they're going to be found immediately. Just depends on the circumstances and who's searching. And I think in this case, you've got general public search and they probably are going to put quite a bit of effort in when Saturday comes, which is around the corner. Just wanted to see, was there any balconies? Yeah, well, there's more balconies over there. I think they're the ones what we looked at. Just unfortunately, we can't get round to them. But uh, well, actually, we didn't do that one, did we? Still the same, though. I just, I just don't see any sliding doors as like the description matched, they look like normal doors to me. So I don't know if I am if I am in the true area or not. But it's closest to the water, at least from what I can see, unless well over that way it becomes more singular housing as well. And that's more formal. So it's this area that stands out to me and the back there you can make out balconies the doors still look the same. Sliding door. I don't know. So it covers some distance, I guess, this river. Not that wide. Narrow in certain areas, but it does go on for quite a bit. So if it is a river, and if Hobo did fall into it, or somehow end up in it, and it's flowing water, how far will he be transported down? And at what point would he be found? Just a little suggestion there, okay? I wonder if we can, like, zoom out to highlight the size of it. So it does, like, bend back on itself, comes back down, meanders in and out. Boone Lake Beach. Ah, okay. Boone Lake. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I just wanted the actual name of it. 
Boone Lake. You've got the boat stair. Unfortunately, it's not 3D here, but these houses, they don't look more singular ones, but you can see the depth of it, the darkness too. So that's going to be deep in those areas, especially the midsection. So you see the water. We were over this way, I believe. It also goes over here. So the main central point, if you would want to call it that maybe, where there's more depth for the epicenter would be here, the lake. And past it, you go into the, the river section. Not quite sure which way the water flow is going from. Uh, Boone Lake is also mentioned there. Boone Lake. Okay. Dried up. So it looks like we are within the correct area, roughly speaking. Okay. And it links back to what we're looking at here. So I think this is roughly the area which will be searched or so. We've seen the parking spot. I want to know your thoughts down below regarding this map, little brief map analysis. So the last thing I just wanted to point out is that even if it came to worst case scenario, there's still that mystery of how did he end up here or there? Was it by choice? Was there some form of foul play? Or was there an accident? Or was it out of his own control? Etc, etc. And of course the closure part too, which the, the family, the friends and friends would um, obviously want. Uh, you know, there'll be some along the way that will say, oh, it's a lost cause, this and that. We've seen it all before, like with the Kenny Veach case, right? And whether it be the awareness part or the interest online, I just wanted to highlight one point, okay? And I just also wanted to highlight a little bit of awareness as well, in case anyone's wondering. There's, as example, just as an example, there is a YouTube username called Casa Miriam, and they've appeared elsewhere on other true crime channels and communities and live chats. They're a bit of a um, demonstrate a form of idiot idiosyncratic behavior let's put it that way in their comments and responses they've shown up on my channel recently they've told me of how i should conduct things and they're acting like the youtube police kind of cringeworthy to be honest but that aside they said recently that oh maybe maybe the kenny veach case isn't for you maybe you need to move on and get with it because it's it's old it's boring people are moving on to other things etc etc people can say that here with hobo shoestring oh the search is long gone now the hope of him being alive is long gone just move on why should anyone have to move on if they want to stay and solve the case or to keep the case alive to try and spread some kind of awareness, what's wrong with doing that stuff? It clearly shows that those other people out there showing that resistance within a community clearly have some kind of agenda or subconscious one. And as an update regarding spreading awareness like with the Kenny Veach one, the last short video that I did in which only about 231 people viewed the video, yet 77.8% of people clicked on the video and watched. With the amount of impressions it generated, it was a success. Basically, more people wanted to watch the video, more people that were showing it clicked on to watch it compared to those that ignored it. So it was of importance and value to people, though YouTube had a low impression rate. YouTube weren't willing to push the video out there, even though people were interested in it. So YouTube were to blame for that, but some impetuous individual in, in the background as a viewer was claiming the case isn't popular. Well, newsflash, when I looked back, it's at over 11,000 views now. As said, it's all under control. It's all under control. It's all under control. It's YouTube that are the problem at times. And with certain stuff, I know what works, I know what doesn't, right? As for this case, as for the awareness it's already created, it's a good thing. Try and keep it going, right? As long as there is awareness or things being talked about within a case with a person missing, such as here with Mark, it'll just help with the discussions. 
Um, it'll help spread the awareness and more people hear about it. Because this is the thing, even if you're in a situation where you might not be able to do much or for other reasons you don't want to do too much, just simply talking about it, simply leaving a comment in a video or in a thread on a different website can generate new ideas, new discussions, new interest, and you never know, it could bring in the right people with the right resources, at the right place at the right time. You know, things like that. Unexpected things can happen. Has there ever been a time though where a missing person or someone within a case has actually been secretly watching in the background, watching along? Well, at least from my experience, it's not been proven. The only thing that had happened, and it's not in relation to a missing person, but a true crime community case, Idaho 4, supposedly Brian Koberger, actually commenting and watching a live stream on that particular case he's supposedly involved in. A little bit odd there. But that doesn't link with the case, what we've covered today. But, you know, there's some crossovers to compare and then others just to contrast so you get into perspective. Just want to know your thoughts down below. Feel free to share this video so more people see it. You know, this is the only second time of me covering this case, so it's only early stages. See how the searches go with time, if anything's found or not, if anything's ticked off the list or not. I'm sure there'll be updates there, and when there is, I'll try and cover it in some way. Glad we got a rough location today, just to have a look at, take in perspective. It's a shame there wasn't any street view imagery or any custom uploaded photos of the, the lake or the river itself. You know, you got those kayaks, you got those boats. It's, it's a shame no one was like passing on through on the water via a boat of some sort and uploaded a, a 360 degree photo just so you get an idea of the, the, I don't know, the water up close. As I said, this satellite imagery isn't up to date, take that into mind. Or at least the street view imagery is out of date. I don't know about the satellite imagery. I don't know if there's ever like a marker anywhere that will tell you. I know on Google Earth Pro, it will give you the date. Maybe I'll take a look at that next time round. We'll just see what people say in the comments here. And I guess just in general, once again, welcome to all the people that have come on in to this channel because of this case and from the community out there. And um, yeah, if there are updates, I'll, I'll cover a video. We'll just see what happens next. I'll leave it there for now. Appreciate people's patience and thanks for watching. Goodbye, good night for now.